Installing an Intel CPU into a Socket 2066 motherboard can be fraught with danger. There can be massive peril. There are ample opportunities for disaster. I might be exaggerating right here, or I may have misplaced my thesaurus. But anyway, let me show you how to put a CPU into that socket. So let's take a look inside a complete operating desktop computer. First thing I'm going to do is connect my anti-static strap to the metal of the computer. You can see I've got it on my wrist here. The next thing we want to do is turn off the power switch on the back of the computer and then we want to unplug the power plug from it. Now I want you to notice something here. When I have this turned on, you can see the LEDs on the motherboard and when I turn the power supply off, those LEDs don't go out immediately. 1001, 1002, they stayed on about three seconds. So there's still some power in the capacitors of the motherboard. So another thing you can do if you want after you unplug the computer from the wall is to hold the power button down on the front of the computer for 15 to 20 seconds. So now that we got this done, I want to take the video card out and the video card is being held in by a latch on the back and a screw on the front. So let me get this case fan wires out of the way and take this screw out right here. Now I'll show you a problem with this motherboard. It, is ha it has suffered a casualty. When I go to pull this video card out, I've got to, first of all, I've got to unplug the video cable from it, the HDMI cable. When I go to pull this out, it just comes straight out. There's a, you notice there's a notch here on the back of the PCI Express 16X, and that goes into a notch on the back of the slot. Now, on this one, the plastic connector that holds it in has actually been broken off because somebody has just taken the video card and pulled straight up and snapped off that notch. If, if I look right here on this slot, you can see that plastic retaining latch and you have to push down on that to be able to release the video card. Let me get my camera kind of set back up here. Here we go. Now the next thing I want to show you is I'm going to remove the heat sink and the CPU. So to do that, I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me turn screws. So I'm going to pause the video while I take the heat sink off. All right, I'm turning the last screw. They're just Phillips head screws with my screwdriver. Now that I got them all screwed, I'm gonna kind of twist the heat sink and wiggle it, and then I can pull it up. And the reason you twist it and wiggle it is to break that heat sink compound free from the CPU chip, because that heat spreader on top of the CPU chip and this metal plug right here, that heat sink compound can kind of dry out over time and kind of glue on. So by twisting it, you break that free. Now I'm going to come back here and you get to just see my hand as I unplug the fan head connector, the four pin fan connector. Now I'm going to set this down on the desk and I'm going to make sure I put it right side up so I don't smear heat sink compound everywhere. Now here's my CPU socket. So now I can release the latches. There's one latch. There's two latches. Get this latch up out of the way. I can push down on this one. It brings the cover up and now I can grab the CPU. Now if you look on the bottom of the CPU right here you can see there are no pins. It just has pads that push up against the pins that are in the socket. So this socket is extremely fragile. You either want to leave the protective cover on the CPU socket or leave the CPU in the motherboard to protect it, okay? Now, when I want to reinstall this, if you look on the CPU right here, there is a triangle. And if I look on the socket, there is a corresponding triangle that shows me which way the CPU has to go. Because if you put the CPU in the wrong way, you will damage the pins of the socket and that will be it. You'll have to buy a new motherboard. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to carefully take the CPU, drop it back in, make sure I've got it locked in place. I'm going to put the cover down, get the first latch, which locks the cover down, push down the second latch, lock it in. You're going to have to push harder than you think you are. 
and now I want to put my heat sink back on. And I'm going to put it this way so that the wires come out and go closest to the fan head. Now I'm going to wiggle this and make sure I got my screw holes lined up and then I'm going to start putting my screws in. But there's an old adage in car repair. Start them all before you tighten any. So push down and get each one of these screws started before you tighten them all the way down. Now these are spring-loaded screws so they will you will feel a very definite stop when you have bottomed out the screw. But get them all started. I've got them all started. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one down. And that's as far as it will go. I'm going to come across to the opposite side. That's as far as that one will go. Get this screw. It's got a ways to go. It's all the way down. And the fourth screw. Now, normally, I would go back through and check all four screws again to make sure they're all the way down. But to keep the video a little shorter, I'm going to skip that because I'm pretty sure I put them all the way down. I'm going to give these wires a twist here because that's going to help them kind of stay out of the way. And now you get to see my fat finger again as I plug in. See nothing but my hand as I plug the CPU fan header back in. Make sure my wires are out of the way. All my wires are out of the way. The computer ain't going to boot without a video card. So I'm going to put my video card back in and just make sure the notch in the PCI Express lines up with the notch down below. Once I get it started, push, 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 push hard to get it all the way in. Got to put my screw back in. It's just a Phillips head screw that holds it in place at this side. And normally we'd have that retention, launch, uh, retention latch on the other side. So I've got the screw started. Get the screw all the way down going to grab my HDMI cable, plug it back into my video card. The computer will work much better if I actually plug the video card in. I'm going to plug in my power cord, turn the power supply on on the back. So now you see that my lights have come back on and I can reach across here and hit the power switch on the front of the computer. And we should hear a beep in a few seconds signifying power on self test successful. And that means the post worked correctly. So we're waiting, waiting, waiting. There it is. It seems to me that the higher in the motherboard, the longer the power on self test takes. So now my screen is booting up. It's giving me a warning saying, hey, your CPU was changed because I took the CPU out of the CPU, out of the socket on the motherboard. So it wants me to press F1 to continue. So when I press F1, it's going to boot up or it's going to boot into the BIOS, and I'll show you the BIOS in the next video.